but there might be problems with it. There might be getting packets coming in out of order. There might be something called jitter. Jitter is something to look at. Um, that is the that is the difference in lag between different packets. If it if it's consistent, that's a low jitter. If it's all over the place, packet one came in and then you had to wait a millisecond for the next one, and then 100 milliseconds for the third one, and then 20 milliseconds for the fourth one. That's a lot of jitter. Jitter can also cause this problem. You, a lot there are download diagnostic tools that you can look at your download speed and see if you do have high jitter. You also want to look at something called buffer bloat. I think this is a little overstated, but it is a problem on some routers where the, the router has, believe it or not, too much memory. And this can cause a problem as well. I generally recommend the DSL reports um, bandwidth test, although maybe there are a lot of uh, additional good, good speed tests. But try start with the DSL reports test. It does tell you uh, things like jitter, latency, and buffer bloat. So you can see if now that's an issue. Buffer bloat is a router issue. Jitter is an issue really usually with the carrier, you know, the people providing your internet. It's not coming in uh, cleanly. Um, and then I would also look at that Fire TV stick, honestly. Uh, this, every time I hear these HDMI sticks, I know they're cheap and they're convenient. It's not a separate box. It's yes, still on TV. But boy, that's, a, that's kind of a mess. It's kind of a recipe for disaster. So those are all things I'd look at. It, it, but now that you understand the what what that buffering means, you can kind of look around and see. It's not it's not the pure internet speed is not the only factor. The hardware that's playing it back is a factor. You see this sometimes even on a computer. The computer gets bogged down. The computer's doing other things. For instance, you see a lot of buffering. That's not that the internet speed's too slow, it's that the computer itself it can't keep up. It just starts eating the buffer. Um, Actually, you should start collecting uh, speed test stuff because there's some new and I think very good speed tests uh, out there. But I still, I you know, generally use the test at DSLreports.com. I think Google's got a speed test now as well. And it's you know, Google these guys, these engineers are pretty goofy. So I think uh, Google, if you just Google speed test, you can run theirs through MLab. Their own internet speed test, but I don't see it giving uh, a lot of additional information like jitter. You really want to look at jitter. That should be how high should jitter be? Uh, lower is better. 20, 30, not more than that, probably. You don't want a lot of variation. That's just a sign of a problem with the connection, really. And if there is a lot of jitter, good luck, maybe. <laughs> maybe you can. Uh, call your internet service provider and say, I got a lot of jitter. I don't know what, what their reaction will be. <laughs> and so you got a lot of what? Honestly, if you had it, if you put me on the spot and say, what, fix, what should I fix? First thing I would do is look at the fire TV stick. Get an external box. Those usually are bigger. You want something with a, a fan. I think a lot of these TV devices don't have fans because they want to be very, very quiet. But that means they overheat, they get hot. Feel the, um, when you're watching a 4K stream and it starts to buffer, go around back to your TV and touch the fire stick. See how hot it is. It's going to be on fire. It's going to be really, really hot. Um, the early uh, one version of these sticks crash all the time because they would just overheat. So it's kind of a, I think that's probably what I would look at. 8888 Um Speed of dot me. Oh, that's good. I like that. Speed of. I'll try that one. We should start to collect some of these. Come up news on KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk. Live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom, America is remembering 9-11 on the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. Every year, we remember the lives lost to violent terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. Speaking at Flight 93 Memorial in Pennsylvania, Governor Tom Wolf said the nation still mourns one of America's darkest days. 
Passengers on board one of four hijacked airliners fought the terrorists who had taken control of Flight 93, prompting a crash outside Kingsville. Forty people were killed. Wolf called the actions of the passengers heroic and extraordinary. News brought to you by Ruder Hero. The names of first responders who lost their lives in the 9-11 attacks are being read this afternoon on the flight deck of the USS Midway Museum in San Diego. Bells will toll. There will be a 21-gun salute and an emergency helicopter flyover during the memorial ceremony at 2.30. Earlier, the Coronado Fire Department held a 9-11 memorial ceremony. Local first responders marked the moment 20 years ago after the first plane hit the World Trade Center with a moment of silence and a symbolic ringing of the station's bell. About 2,500 runners took part in the 25th annual Surf City USA Marathon in Huntington Beach this morning. It was the first marathon held in California since the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. Runners took off eight minutes before sunrise along PCH. Crash in Inglewood on the 405. That's north on that Century Boulevard. It has the carpool lane block. Your drive is jammed from the 105. It's a busy drive for you in Hollywood if you're on the 101 southbound. You'll start seeing brake lights once you get to sunset. That stays busy until you get to the 110. And in Westminster on the 405 north on that Golden West, there's a solid garbage truck block in the right lane. You're seeing delays from Edinger. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Pedro Moreno. Southland weather from KFI, sunny and very warm this weekend. Highs in the 70s at the beaches, mid-80s to mid-90s for Metro LA and Inland OC, 90s to low 100s for the valleys and Inland Empire. We'll cool down a few degrees on Monday with a slight cooling trend continuing through next week under sunny skies. We leave local live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom on Amy Chain. This report is sponsored by Norm Reed Honda Superstore. Summer may be almost over, but they're still trying to get super prices on a super selection of new Honda. During the final days of the Honda Summer Sales Event, return your Honda lease to one of their five lease return shooter centers and upgrade today online at normreads.com. <laughs> If you ever get hurt in an accident, the insurance company will offer to pay you very little for your injury. Well, Sweet James Accident Attorney will not let that happen. If you get hurt in an accident, call Sweet James. Get the medical care you need and the money you deserve. And pay nothing until they win. Call 800-500-5200. 800-500-5200 or sweetgames.com. <laughs> The attacks of 9-11 forever changed America. They also marked the beginning of the war on terror. Join me for 9-11, two decades later, an exploration of decisions made to make Americans safer. We will attempt to answer the question, is America safer today than 20 years ago? Today at 3 at 8 p.m. on KFI. More stimulating talk. <laughs> Stay away from those. 
just in case your plans change. I mean, my plans are always changing. I had a flight last night. I canceled literally an hour, this hour and a half before. So I always buy the flights that um, you can keep canceling. And it seems to be not much more money these days. And regarding that, by the way, I wrote a post, one of my tips this week was dealing with your credits. I had a reader write in and say, hey, I have all these American Airlines credits that are about to expire. And I had the same problem. So if anyone's listening and has this with American or other airlines, here's a couple ways to get your money back, which is almost impossible, but it's a, it's kind of a, a, a hack. But So I called up and I asked the airline, I said, how many, how many credits do I have? And they looked it up and said, you have six flights that you, wow. that you canceled. And, but they're, they're for different, different amounts of money. And so they had two international ones where I canceled the flights. So I was like, listen, you can't use the international ones um, two at a time. So when, you, so when you're booking and using these credits, you can only use either one credit or two credits on one flight. So one way around it is by booking one-way tickets. Don't book a round trip. So let's say I'm going to LA, New York, like I was supposed to this week. I was able to use four credits because I used two on each flight. And that paid for, it paid for the ticket, actually. But now, because I just canceled, I have those credits right back, and I just have one credit on each of those flights. And I can use them for good for a year. And now if I book it for another flight and it gets canceled, I'll get my money completely refunded. Okay, it makes me mad though. It seems like it's it, well, I guess because you canceled the flight, not them, right? If they cancel, they have to give you the money back. Don't they, they have to. It's, it's, yeah. it's by federal law. DOT yeah. mandates it. Although Air Canada, WestJet, a lot of Canadian airlines really tick people off, including me, because they would not refund money until they got their big package from the government. But um, so, you know, they're getting fined right now. Yeah. So, but. And do not book through a third party unless you really have a, unless you have to or you find a really good deal, like a package deal. Right. Because going through third parties, which most people learn during a pandemic, is it's very tough to get a hold of someone. And if you do get a hold of someone, they say, you know what, you need to contact the airline. And then you contact the airline, they're, they're saying, you need to contact the person you booked it through. So the only third party I would book through is a travel agent, not an online travel agent. Right. Generally, it's, uh, you said before, best to wait until they cancel the flight. So that's, right. that's one of the gambles. So if you want the money back, the airline will most likely not cancel far in advance. So I wait usually a few hours before and see if it's either severely delayed or canceled. Always find out from the airline what their policy is, because I think Air Canada, you have to call two hours before departure. That's what you need to find out, is what's the deadline for me to cancel. Exactly. And then you'll wait for the deadline for you to cancel, and if they still haven't canceled, well, then you're going to have to cancel and yeah, take from, your credit. For American Airlines, it's, it's when the departure is. If you uh-huh. wait until after the departure, then you lose the value. But you can go online and cancel it, which is what if I do. If it's a late flight, you're waiting for the actual departure or the nominal, the, the original departure time? I mean, I usually like to see if they change. If they, you know, if you put the ticket far in advance, chances are they're going to change the time significantly. Yeah. And that's one way of actually getting the flight that you want. So let's say I, I want to fly on a, a new flight to New York from yeah. LA. Yeah. But the cheap flights are the 5 p.m. flights because no one wants to be on them. So right. I, I book it, and then like six months later, they change it. And they say, sorry. And then I call up and say, listen, I don't want to take it uh, on Red Eye at 11 o'clock at night. I have two little kids. They're like, okay, we'll just change it to the 12 o'clock flight. Ah, for no charge, no change fees. <laughs> for sure. If they, if they delay the flight by more than a couple hours, each airline is different on uh, what the delay length is. Or if they cancel it, you get the money back. So is there somewhere that, that has all these policies? Like, I guess you just have to come through their website, right? Cancellation no one, policy. No one wants to read their contract of yeah. It's, yeah. I think it's 28 pages long. <laughs> but <laughs> there's stuff in there that might be useful. That's what we have you for, Johnny. It's useful to fall asleep to. <laughs> it's, good, it's good bedtime reading. You will fall asleep. So even though uh, COVID and Delta uh, variant are around and problematic, you still are responsible, even if you're canceling because you don't want to take a chance. That's for sure. That's still you. That's still on you. But a lot of the airlines are cutting back their flights, so there's a chance uh-huh. that they really will cancel that flight. They're, uh-huh. 
you know, they're constantly, almost every week, actually, the crankyflyer.com is, is a great website. He writes a newsletter, and every Monday he does a post on what, what airlines are cutting right. or, or adding, but these days they're mostly cutting. Mm. So you can follow that along and find out, you know, what's going on. If you have a flight mm. to a European country that is now banning Americans, but Netherlands, Sweden, and, and, and so I can't go. Is it how, who is responsible for that? The airline? If you're flying there, they're not going to refund your money. And that was one of my big things because I, I had put on my international flights with Canada and Canada was closed in the beginning. I mean, I mean, for 18 months they were closed. So they're like, sorry. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I now know so why you said thank you. <laughs> not just them, I was present. I bet. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, when the, you know, plane fares are so low, I think a lot of people, in fact, I think you recommend this book stuff. Uh, yeah. They take it right now. Yeah. I was just looking right now. You can fly between LA and San Francisco to New York for under $200. I think it was 178 round trip on the major carriers, not Spirit Airlines, which you can get for $61. But then they're going to get you for $60 for an overhead uh, train. And to reiterate, please pl it's safe to fly. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting sick on a plane. Um, mm -hmm. they, have, they have HEPA filters. They yeah. they, Wear your mask. Do they make you wear your mask? You still have to wear it. Like, didn't the TSA double the fines now for? They did actually. I, I, I've been doing some local news here because they doubled the fine, and so now it's five hundred up to five. It's five hundred dollars for the first offense. Wow. Or five hundred to a thousand, and up to three thousand for your second one. Wow. But I don't think that's going to do it. I think what the airlines need to do is that if they ban you from one airline, they need to ban you on every airline. They need to share the database. Yeah. Because that that will definitely make people. You know, act properly. Well, wear, just wear your mask, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's okay. It protects you, protects people around you. You vaccinated, wear your mask. I think the planes are safe. What about the airports? That's safe, right? Just social distance. You just want to stay away from people. Okay. Get that mask I, I, go to, I go to gates. These days, not every gate's being used. So go down to a, mm. to a gate that's empty and then try and be the last person to board on your flight. Just make yeah. sure you don't miss it. I don't, you know, I don't, we flew to Hawaii as I, uh, in July, and I, uh, you know, I'm wearing masks. It's not fun to wear masks for five hours. Get a comfortable mask. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I, I didn't feel, I didn't feel at risk. And I did, you know, wipe down the area. In fact, United gave us all packets of disinfectant to wipe down yeah, our seats. Every airline does, right? Yeah, I like that. 1.7 million people passed through security checkpoints yesterday. People are flying. Not 1.7 million people are getting sick uh, yeah. right now. So, yeah. I mean, all these flight attendants and pilots, I have neighbors who are, who are flying every other day, wow. and they haven't gotten it. It's so. pretty safe on this point. So. Okay, Johnny Jet. I'm flying to the Netherlands tomorrow. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. We're yeah. going to We'll see you next week. Safe travels, guys. Subscribe to the newsletter. KFI AM 640. I'm Amy King. Live from the KFI 24 hour newsroom, President Biden and the First Lady have been joined by former Presidents Clinton and Obama to mark the 20th anniversary of the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City. The Bidens will also visit the other two 9-11 crash sites today for a refueling in the Pentagon and in Chancellor, Pennsylvania. The co-owner of a network of online charter schools who is accused of stealing tens of millions of dollars in California education funds has been sent to four years in prison. Jason Trump and a co-defendant were also fined at $37.5 million. Lawmakers in California finished work on their 2021 legislative session. Lawmakers passed bills this session to make it easier to build small apartment buildings in areas zoned for single-family homes and also pay people struggling with drug addiction to stay sober. Crash cleared in Inglewood on the 405. That's north down just after Century Boulevard. It's been cleared out of the carpool lane to the center divider. Traffic has recovered there. Hollywood is a busy drive through on the 101 southbound as you approach Franklin Avenue. You'll see some stop and go traffic there. It clears up right around the 110. And in Westminster on the 405 northbound at Golden West, there's still a small garbage truck that has the right lane blocked causing a heavy drive from about Warner Avenue. KFI in the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Pedro Moreno.
Income eligible renters impacted by COVID-19 can now get 100% of their past due rent and utility bills paying through the California COVID-19 Rent Relief Program. Landlords with tenants who haven't paid rent because of COVID-19 are eligible for 100% reimbursement too. The application is fast. Your information is private and you won't be asked about citizenship. Apply at housingisq.com before eviction protections end on September 30th. Brought to you by the California Department of Housing and Community Development. Spectrum Business called their competitors to see if any of them can beat Spectrum's Business Internet Plus phone offer for $69.98 per month with no added phone taxes or fees. Here are real quotes from the competition. I wouldn't say you no fees or taxes, but neither. I would 100% go with Spectrum. You, the competition, recommend Spectrum Business. Call 855-339-5344 and switch to Spectrum Business today. Competitor quotes, maximum phone conversations, limited time offer, restrictions supply. Call for details. And in and out, we'll admit we're sticklers for a lot of things, like maintaining the highest standards with our fresh ingredients, striving to do what's right by our customers, and never, ever taking your loyalty for granted. Some may call us old-fashioned. We call it business as usual. Great. Subject to change without addition. Minimum loan amount requirement applies. 50% loan to value and 745 credit credits for 30 subscription apply. Subject to credit approval. NMLS 3290. Loans made or arranged. Pursuit to California Finance Lenders Law License Number 6036970. Equal housing lender. Unbelievable. Home loan rates have dropped again at Intel Alone. Today, Intel Alone is offering a 1.875% rate in APR with no points and no lender fees. Did you hear that? A 1.875%. Don't think you qualify? I bet you haven't called Intel alone. You don't have to have perfect credit to get this great home loan. So lock in this unbelievably low 1.875% fixed rate in APR with no points and no lender fees. So call Intel alone before the rates go up. Call them at 1-800-918-6200. That's 1-800-918-6200. And just go to IntelliLoan.com. IntelliLoan. Hello, Mark. Alzheimer's disease is a national crisis. More than 6 million Americans are living with a diagnosis. Alzheimer's Los Angeles provides people living with the disease and their caregivers with support and services to make their lives a little easier. Learn more at alzheimersla.org. I specialize in the science of love, but there's a dark side to our intimate relationship, stalking, and sexual assault. How does it evolve in our species, and what can we do to get rid of it? Dr. Wendy Wolf, Mexico won't let Tesla open a dealership there, and you got to really wonder about all of that. 
Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a reasonable rationale. You know, you're not paying the gas taxes, which supports the roads. It's not the only source of revenue, but it's a, it's a significant portion. So I think that's not unfair. But you save so much money uh, on electric vehicle, not just on uh, gas and but on maintenance. And they're fun to drive. What kind do you have? It's it's a Nissan Leaf 2013. Yeah, they're really fun to drive. It claims we get 70 miles to a charge, but that's not really for <laughs> the older battery, yeah. yeah. The battery, the battery technology has really improved. That's the other thing, and the ranges have really improved. And Tesla's uh, really led the way with that. There are 10-year-old Teslas on the road that are still very close to, you know, 90% of their total battery life. They've, they've really improved that. So. Now, we went to a fast charger then, because we used the trickle charger that came with it. And that does what we needed to most of the time. We happened to... And when we were buying the vehicle, I was thinking, now, do we have an outlet? Yes, we have an outlet we can reach with this thing on our front porch. Uh, but I was thinking about the uh, quick charger, the one that uh, uses a large plug that uh, takes about 30 minutes or so to charge it up. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just wondering, is this one here charges 25 cents a minute? Is that typically a reasonable price? That seems, let's see, 20, yeah, that seems fair. Um, the price is very... Uh, depending on the locale and the cost of electricity in the locale. Uh, but you can look it up online. You can look up Electrify America, for instance, which is the biggest charging network yeah. Yeah. Tesla owns. Uh, Electrify America is kind of a fun story. It's the, uh, it's the penance that Volkswagen Audi has to pay for the uh, diesel case. They were fined a very big fine, billions of dollars, and required to build out uh, electric electric charging all over the uh, country. <laughs> so uh, so this is their penance. And the good news is now the bad news is it probably won't work with your leaf because it's uh, older. Uh, this kind of fast charging CCS yes. fast charging. You you use Chatamo, so you have to go to a Chatamo charger. And I don't know if you can use fast charging in that older leaf. That may be. Um, well, no, that one uh, no, that one we could. Oh, it's good. Two ports. It has the. A... Uh, it has the one little one that's uh, probably an inch and a half round, and then there's this huge one that must be yeah. must be close to four inches. That's for the fast DC, oh, yeah. DC charging, yeah. yeah. And when I when I went to the charging station, there were two uh, fire hoses that you could plug in. <laughs> <laughs> they look like fire hoses, anyway. You're uh, better off, uh, unless you need it, like you're going on a trip or oh, something, man, using the yeah. trickle charging at home. Yeah, that's 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 it's easier on the battery, yeah, and it costs less. Yeah. 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 Uh, but but so that those, those fast charges are great for when you're on a road trip, especially if you only get 70 miles. Um, yeah, and we just we just needed it to we got down to where we were at. We needed to we didn't want to hang around to get home. The dealership had <laughs> the dealership had a level two they call it. That was yeah, that's the fast. Three right. hours. Yeah. Um, but we said you know we'll pay for the one that's 30 minutes and we'll get charged up and get home. So yeah. and that's why we did it. Yeah. But also your Mac person, yes, yeah, super duper. I I love using that one. Also carbon copy cloner. I don't know if they're yep. around. Love that. It still is, and it's great. Yep. It was, now, do any of those do file compression anymore? Or do they, any of them? That's, a, that's uh, a good question. I don't believe they do uh, because both carbon copy cloner and super duper are really just making a one-to-one -one copy of the file. So to do compression, they have to make it a kind of a ball, not a good file. Yeah. Um, and the disadvantage of that is you have to uncompress it before you can see if it was exactly. correctly yeah. copied. So generally, I don't worry about that. It, nowadays, the external hard drives tend to be larger than the internal hard drives, so oh, yes. you're not going to run out of room. Um, I didn't use Time Machine either. I'd look at it to see how yeah, I, I think it's I don't need this. I think it's funky. <laughs> would, you, would you buy another electric vehicle? Uh, I think we might try for a hybrid next time because we're, we're, our budget just uh, right now doesn't work too hard. We got a good deal on this one, but I don't know how I think it's going to work for us. Yeah. The batteries really add to the cost, yeah. They, they're, they're a significant amount to the cost. My wife just bought a, a Mini Cooper, and uh, after the uh, tax rebates from the feds in the state, I think it came out as $20,000 brand new. So, I mean, yeah, that's more than uh, some cars, but it's, it's not out of the question. It doesn't have a giant battery pack either. That's probably one of the reasons it's not the yeah. Hey, Joe, a pleasure talking to you. 
Yeah, take care. Have a great day. I'm a big fan of uh, electric, but I live in California, and he lives in Georgia. We don't have to worry so much about cold winters. I don't know uh, how that changes the equation. And certainly, I don't live far from civilization, so I don't have to drive very many miles. But it's true. It's sure fun to drive. And not having to go to a gas station, you can't knock that. That's a nice benefit. Uh, our show today brought to you, as always, by Remote PC. Why drive to work at all when you can stay at home and still get everything done? You put Remote PC on your computer at work. Windows or Mac, doesn't matter. Now, wherever you are, if you can get access to a PC, a Mac, or on your iOS or Android device, you can log into that computer at work securely run any program, upload and download files, access the company network, lickety split fast as can be. It's the best. It's not just me that said it. Uh, <laughs> Tech Radar says remote PC is the best remote access solution. Yeah, I agree. PC Magazine said remote PC is effortless with a simple interface and learning curve, fast performance, and users can easily transfer files between local and remote desktops. People just love Remote PC. Oh, and you've got a lot of price. Now, normally, the normal price, uh, seven bucks a month, mm -hmm. ten computers. Right now, if you go to remotepc.com, that's ninety percent off for your whole first year. So it's just pennies a month. They want you to give it a try, and they're giving you a whole year to do it. If you like it, especially if the boss is letting you work from home, remotepc.com. He's my name, Ray. Dennis, Corona, California. Hi, Dennis. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> Hey, Leo, first time, long time. Uh, Thanks for calling. It's nice to meet you. Actually, I'm not quite the tech nerd. I am a tech field in that I maintain large scale uninterrupted power supplies. Wow. It's a backup for location. Um, Neat. Facilities all over, the, you know, all over the state of California here. You know, you're in excess of 3 megawatts, um, you know, per, per system. So I did get my hand in on PCBs and transistors and stuff like that, but uh, some of the, uh, the, the finer arts of uh, geek them are not quite proficient on. Well, we all have our areas, you know, that we specialize in. It's, it's too big these days for anybody to be an expert in everything, I have to say. I, I used to try. That's <laughs> not easy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, keep, I keep the, the systems up that go from, you know, you know, they have uh, rectifiers, inverters, large-scale batteries that, that, again, get set down by power distribution units that run wet out to the racks, and then the racks host the servers for a number of um, industries, you know, to, throughout the world, really. So um, it's, it's kind of cool. But, hey, um, i got a question here. I really want to try to do a VPN localized to my wireless router. Now, I've got a Motorola MD7540 to get rid of Spectrum, you know, vendor equipment, you know, several years back. It doesn't have the capability of putting a VPN on the actual router itself. And so I was looking into ExpressVPN and Proton VPN because I'd like to send crypto. Yeah. The the I'm VPN. running out of time, so I'm just going to say ExpressVPN, which is one of our sponsors, has a page, a number of routers it works well with.